Hi, I'm Colin and this is Spaceflight Made Simple. Now today we're going to talk about something iconic from the American space program. Something almost so well known in the public psyche that its name has become synonymous with spacecraft and that is the space shuttle. Specifically, we're going to talk about designing the space shuttle. The circumstances of its design and development are fascinating and it's something that doesn't get talked about much, so I figured I'd cover it today. So the space shuttle was developed on the heels of the Apollo program, which was massive and expensive and not very efficient. In fact, the decision to begin work on designing the space shuttle was made before we had even landed on the moon. And it came about basically due to cost. Apollo was so big and expensive, and while it did incredible things, it was also a major bank drain. They knew that they couldn't support funding for the project very long after they'd landed on the moon, and they needed some way to keep accessing space. So the discussion shifted from how do we go to the moon to how do we get to space cheaply and efficiently? And work began on designing the space shuttle. By the time the last people had walked on the moon, a design for the shuttle was more or less kind of finalized. We had something on paper that looked a lot like what ended up flying. And the space shuttle actually had a companion project, which would become known as Space Station Freedom. If you ever look up drawings or renders of what Space Station Freedom would have looked like, it looks a lot like the International Space Station. Basically, at the time, the Soviet Union was launching a bunch of space stations in what was called the Salyut program, and the United States just didn't want to be left behind. So the system was two pieces. The shuttle would be how they would launch the space station to orbit, and how they would crew it, so they'd, you know, launch crew on the shuttle, return crew on the shuttle. And the space station would be a reason for the space shuttle to go to space. But there was a bump very early on when the space shuttle was funded, but not the space station. The decision was made to simply cut funding for the space station part of this program and just develop the shuttle. Still, development continued. The shuttle, by this time though, was behind schedule. They kind of intended it to be ready to fly in the late 70s, and by 78, they hadn't even flown a prototype to make sure that it could fly properly and land properly. And, on top of that, clock was ticking. Skylab, which was launched in the early 70s, was decaying, its orbit slowly dipping lower and lower into Earth's atmosphere, and eventually, by 1980, it would burn up. One of the ideas for one of the early missions the shuttle could fly was to rescue Skylab. Basically to strap a rocket booster to it so it could be boosted back up into a higher orbit. Things were too far behind schedule to allow that to happen, and in the late 70s, Skylab burned up in the atmosphere. In 79, the shuttle's full-scale prototype glider was tested, the Enterprise. Now, the Space Shuttle Enterprise is not a full space shuttle, but is instead an aerodynamically identical model of the shuttle that would be released from the top of a Boeing 747. The crew on board would then guide it down to the ground, making sure that the shuttle's sort of design was appropriate for landing in a glider form onto a runway. There were a few plans in the early stages to convert the Enterprise, the sort of test vehicle, into a functioning space shuttle and launch it into space. However, those plans never really came to fruition. Instead, the first shuttle launch took place on April 12th, 1981, exactly 20 years after the first human spaceflight. This is actually the first and to date only spacecraft NASA has ever flown that never had an unmanned orbital test flight. The first time the shuttle went to space, there were two crew members on board. This was due to the complex nature of the shuttle and the fact that it really couldn't function properly in its entirety without crew on board. Luckily, STS-1 was a success. The shuttle flew magnificently, went up into space, orbited a bunch, came back, and landed. Now you may notice if you watch old videos of STS-1 that it looks a little different from most of the shuttles that you'll see. And I am of course referring to the white paint scheme on the external tank. That was actually the original plan, to paint the external tank white, sort of in a paint scheme similar to what we saw on a Saturn V. But that decision was kind of abandoned when they realized that they could save a ton of weight by not painting the tank. And by the way, that's not for aerodynamic reasons, it's simply the weight of the paint. So by STS, I believe it was four, they had ditched the white tank for the orange external tank that we're all so familiar with that flew all the way through to the end of the shuttle program. If you want more information about the space shuttle, I actually am doing a whole series here covering America's last manned spacecraft, the space shuttle. So if you want to be kept up to date on when the next videos in this series come out, head down below the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified.
Also, if you have any questions about the space shuttle or about space flight in general, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them there, or who knows, it might be the topic of a future video. So for Space Flight Made Simple, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. Thank you.